There is a reason that these two teams are the best in the NBA. They each do really uniquely strategic things, but in the end, the Boston Celtics showed why they are the best team in the entire league. One thing that makes the Celtics special is their approach to team defense. The Celtics are second in the league defensively behind none other than the Minnesota Timberwolves. Joe Mazzulla's first of many unorthodox moves was putting Jason Tatum on big boy Carl Anthony Towns. Now this would allow Al Horford to check Kyle Anderson and leave his 12% three-point percentage alone in the corner. See here how he just stays inside and helps stop the T-Wolves drive. And then he doesn't have to really close out, and this part is so smooth. As Anderson crosses the paint, Al drifts some help towards Tatum, who is now undersized inside. Good double team. This girl is clearly not impressed. Someone tell her she's made it onto my channel. There, now she's good. This disrespectful style of defense even worked when the Celtics got switched onto different checks. Here Jalen Brown breaks a usual rule of strong side help, but he is able to fully leave Anderson wide open. This free roaming helper inside allows Boston to play ultra aggressive up top versus Anthony Edwards as well. Look how they switch this action, and that leaves Derek White in a ball denial position. The counter would now be for a backdoor cut, but Al just peels back into that passing lane to take that option away. Rumor also has it that Ime Udoka was also seen in the building checking out his old crew. Boston uses some out of the box things that most coaches are too scared to touch. I've never seen an NBA team try this one before. I first saw this against the Pacers where Drew Holiday is playing the center in a 2-3 zone. Now he is responsible for all cutters. The Celtics defense looks insanely weaponized and dangerous here as they force the number one offensive team into a shot clock violation. Now the Celtics actually tried this against the T-Wolves, but what is wild is where it actually came from. Well, one of the most iconic college upsets to ever happen was when a guard named Joe Mazzulla played down low guarding DeMarcus Cousins and his super team. Unable to play with that broken foot. And Mazzulla with a shoulder bones that are rubbing against each other, a congenital problem. Oh. Boston would try this out versus Minnesota with Derek White at center. Tatum gets dragged across and it starts to crumble the zone down. Looks like Tatum is now playing center and White is now in Tatum's spot and oh gosh, that's wide open. Agreed. The counters the T-Wolves used show why they are the top team in the West. Now with Kyle Anderson subbed out of the game, look how Cat sets this screen, which gives him a nasty seal. That pass should have been made, but the ball moves high and I still don't know why that pass isn't made. Drew now clamps down inside. Carl, I'll give you a hypothetical assist for that one. Tatum up top on Cat is genius because he can use his length and speed to disrupt that three. Minnesota came out of the timeout with a plan though. They move it around into a post-up. Finch then says, get the heck out of my corner. Watch Luke Cornett though. He completely leaves his cutting man and helps to contest another shot inside. Now the Celtics offense is a nightmare to guard. A big key to the success is getting Jaden McDaniels switched off of Jason Tatum as much as possible and good things will often happen. Right, takes it back, goes to the corner instead. Tatum takes it. This is why Tatum is elite. He jabs to push McDaniels deeper into that screen. This now forces help to come from the nail and Drew then gets a closeout to attack. Holiday splits the defense, nice gift. Joe's fired up for that one. And the Celtics love to run these five out empty set pick and rolls. I always say that it just takes forcing one closeout to unlock an entire defense. Here the pick and pop forces a tough closeout. And as soon as that gets attacked, look at how perfectly it collapses that defense. And what do you know about Luke Cornett, man? Then guess what the Wolves would run next? A five out, hmm, empty set pick and roll. But look at the difference and how the Celtics are just able to smother Edwards and leave Anderson up top and whips the perfect pass though and oh my goodness this man is so uncomfortable with a basketball in his hands the celtics crave the switch but it can sometimes lead to some awkward possessions on offense 
Okay, that was nice. My goodness, sometimes the C's can get so selfish though. This is a very basic read in basketball. Jalen Brown has a great seal. He spins baseline and finds an extra defender. Guess who would instantly be open? Now everybody is just standing around watching isolation ball. Ugh, next trip down, let's get a gooder look. Ah, uh, never mind. Stopping Anthony Edwards is an almost impossible challenge for teams this year. Now, on a set play, Missoula notices early that the Wolves are going to get right into a post-up. Listen to him here. And the Celtics run a scram switch to now put Horford on Cat. Edwards has no other choice but to do this. Nice job by Brown. Oh. Edwards better with the shot. But throughout a game, there are clues that you can use that only the best coaches utilize. Ant has one of the best defenders in the league, Drew Holiday, on him, but it literally doesn't matter. You know the Celtics are always looking to force switches and attack those mismatches. Oh yeah, in behind the back. Yeah, man, respect the name on the back, respect it, mm-hmm. Usually I think commentators are insanely stupid, but the Celtics dudes were picking up on a few things. Team shots, one thing to note, zero assists. I'm not trying to say that he's not looking to pass, and but- The Celtics would actually adjust right then, which would have a huge impact on the craziest finish of the year. Here, Drew Holiday comes over to double, which gets a rotation to the top, but then Drew sprints all the way back to the other side of the floor to grab a loose player. More on that later though. Now down seven, keep your eye on Tatum as he blitzes Edwards again. And here's a great dirty little trick on a jump ball, especially if you have white man's disease. As you are jumping, grab the arm of your opponent to jump higher. At this point in the game, I actually thought it was over, but Boston's experience and coach Coaching is why they can claw back. It's the little things like this. Tatum realizing that Horford's man is sagging way off. So what does he do? He goes to set a screen for him. The Celtics then really started to target Carl Anthony Towns, who honestly has been so impressive as a defender this year. Tatum takes it. Then this dude's like, get Gooders number one, baby. You better subscribe. And on defense, the Celtics are doing the exact opposite. Once again, trapping, forcing the ball out of the best player's hands. Now, Boston has played through these moments in every single scenario. And Minnesota decides to send that same blitz. Look, though, how this shot fake draws them all in tighter. And then we get a kick out and then swing to the guy who is shooting a league leading 62.5% on corner threes this year. And then in overtime, the chess match between these coaches just revs up. The Mr. 11% three-point shooter slides to the opposite side of the baseline. This actually pulls the rotational help away from Cat's side. Edwards then drives to the right, knowing that that double will come wide open look. Tatum would go after the big man in more switches. The Celtics would show Edwards that they are the more experienced team. And this has to be one of the most energizing sequences I've seen. Celtics with the steal. Holiday, Tatum takes his time, knocks it down. Ball kiss to him. There you go. The Wolves are especially special when they have Rudy Gobert, which is why you should check this video out here.